How would you like to make an impact in your community? How would you like to help someone that you know who's been a victim of some type of trauma? Well, maybe it's domestic violence or something a little bit more traumatic. Retired police officer and domestic violence expert, Rebecca L. Mahan, created a program that has been so successful that lives have dramatically changed and people have been able to overcome significant trauma. The book, Victims Overcoming Traumatic Events, is available on Amazon and is designed for patrol officers and those who respond first to domestic violence. That includes you. You might be responding to a friend or a family member that's had to, well, face a very challenging situation that has been very traumatic for them. Domestic violence or otherwise, the focus of the book really gives details that can be applied to any type of calls for service. And those who are patrol officers, nurses, and family or friends can really utilize the tools and resources that are provided inside to make a difference. There's even a chapter how you can change unhealthy things going on in your life to make them healthy and move forward. Take a few minutes to head over on Amazon.com, Victims Overcoming Traumatic Events by Rebecca L. Mahan. With me today, I have a guest, David Wright. He's the president and owner of Wright Financial Group, LLC, out of Ohio. And he has got over 34 years experience as a financial advisor. He's a business owner and a whole lot more. I found so many things helpful about what I learned in, well, the book that he shared with me. And I'm going to share that with you as we talk about 3 and 30 today, Bonfire of the Sanities. Welcome to the show, David M. Wright. Welcome. Well, thank you for having me, Rebecca. I'm excited to be here. I am excited to have you on the show too, because I think we live in such a fast paced world and we are grasping for so many things that we can do and tie it in to our current life, but we need to do it quick. We have these decisions that we got to make all the time. And way back when I would say it's the drive through ATM machine and all of these different things, but it's even more so now we're talking about scrolling fast, doing things quickly and your book is so succinct with the information that it is. It's really powerful. So tell me a little bit about three things that you can tell us in 30 minutes that's going to change somebody's life. And uh, you can tell us a little bit about you first, if you like. Well, uh, thank you, Rebecca. It's an honor to be on your show and to talk about uh, the book, specifically this labor of love from over 30 years of being a financial advisor. First and foremost, uh, I uh, was raised in a family of music. Uh, my father uh, was a singer. Um, I ended up being a music teacher for the first several years of my life, uh, morphed into a uh, financial advising business. Um, that's a long story maybe for another time, but this book, Bonfire of the Sanities, was written out of a desire to educate people on the two, there's two primary phases of investing. One is the accumulation phase of investing. When you're younger and you wanna build the value of your accounts as reasonably as possible and you have a longer time horizon. If you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s and 50s, you can take more what? More risk with your investments because you have the time horizon to take the risk. Uh, and later in your life, you are entering the distribution phase where you have to be a little bit more careful about the selections you make and how you invest your money because you can't tolerate as much risk because you don't have as much time. So it's important for uh, everyday Americans to understand what phase of investing they're in. And that's kind of what led me to this book, On Fire of the Sanities. Um, first of all, it was gonna be kind of a self-help book, but then when COVID hit us and all this money was printed by the federal government during COVID uh, shutdown, Rebecca, uh, a new problem occurred. And when uh, money was printed by our Federal Reserve, it flooded all this money into savers' pockets. Uh, people were off work. So what did they do? They spent the money. That created inflation. And the inflation took over in our economy in the 2021 time horizon. So we had a huge 
recession in 2022. And a lot of people that attend my workshops that I put on here locally in the Ohio uh, area, uh, I was hearing a common recurring theme. Too much risk in my portfolio. I'm losing my uh, money too quickly. I'm afraid of the number one fear most retirees have isn't death. It's running out of money before running out of life. So understanding that people are in this constant battle of having money um, have a purpose for them and understanding how to get money to do what they want the money to do for their retirement became a passion of mine. Uh, and it led me to the firm that I'm with now and this book, Bonfire of the Sanities, that I think can help people, first of all, determine, number one, where they are in their life. Are they in the accumulation phase where they can grow their money more uh, or are they in the distribution phase? Number two, how do you uh, understand if you're in a distribution phase, whether you want to invest for maximum return with minimum risk? And is that maximum return for a large purchase? Is it for a, a boat? Is it for your kids? Or are you investing for maximum return for income? Income okay. is the engine of retirement. So that would be the second thing. And thirdly, that if you wanna get those resources of knowing you wanna invest for income in retirement or building retirement income, you have to work with a, a specialist or someone that knows how to produce income reliably and predictably. I love what you're saying because you hit on <laughs> out of the many notes that I've made from your book, three that were important to me. And I know that mm -hmm. the audience, no matter what age that's tuning in is going to, this is going to resonate. But the first one I'm going to start with is current retirees and how is this applicable to the younger generation? Because they're going to be a retiree at some point. And this is something I think that goes by so fast. We think I have plenty of time. And in essence, we don't because two things can happen. One happened to me, totally unexpected. I ended up having to medically retire from my profession. That was it done deal. I retired early and I still had quite a few years left. So that changed for me. And one of the things that I really liked about what was in your book, and I'm, I'm taking this out, I'm going to, hopefully the audience can see this, what retirees really want. Mm -hmm. The one thing I was hoping that maybe you could chime a little bit in on without giving away all of it was something that I find very profound because if I can understand this, this is going to help me understand where as a retiree, what it is that I want. And then if I'm not at that point yet, how do I get there? And that is what you say, purpose-based. Right. As I said before, Rebecca, everybody wants maximum return for minimum risk. But nobody, including the, your advisor, if you're working with one, rarely asks the question, what is your money for? Uh, is it for a, a large purchase or for your family legacy? Or maybe you want to add a wing on to your church or hospital. But nine times out of 10, what most people will say to me is that they want their money to be there for income. They want reliability. They want to know that their money can be used in a manner where they're not destroying the principal, destroying principal too soon in their retirement. And that's the big aha. People um, understand the, the Maslow's theory of hierarchy. Mm -hmm. um, when, when I was a young man in high school, I, I had the lead role in Fiddler on the Roof. I played Tevya. And I sang this song, If I Were a Rich Man. In that song, Tevya realizes if I was wealthy, I would I would buy all these fancy things. I'd fill my farmyard with chicks and geese and all the townspeople would be so thrilled to know I'm wealthy and I would be so uh, egotistical about that. But the more he thinks about it, the more he realizes he'd have more time to sit in a synagogue and pray, become a more wise and learned man, be able to help other individuals. So money, if you understand what money can do for you, it can give you a reliable uh, means 
to supplement your retirement with Social Security so that you in turn can not worry about your retirement, have enough cash flow to be able to help other individuals uh, you know, with their needs along the way. Maybe you can do more volunteer work. Maybe you can help out at your church or charity, but it gives you that, uh, that sense of security that Maslow talks about. Uh, people really just wanna make sure they have their food, their shelter, and their ability to uh, have a worry-free uh, world in their retirement. That is so true. I mean, Worry-free is spot on in my opinion, because I think once um, we take a point in our life where we have anxiety over the things that we're doing and we are worried about things, I don't know that we can focus and get through as easy as it would be if we know where our finances are coming and um, our food is at, at it abundant supply and everything is going good but i think and and i really like what you're saying about this because during a time period where we had such a a large uh i don't even i, I want to use the right word here and maybe you can help me with this because during the two years of covid life changed for so many people and there was not an abundant supply of everything people were looking at shortages we had problems with um, getting food supply there was not only that but being isolated in the house and being what's contaminated what isn't and there was so much fear-based things going on that it really created um i think a big shift and um so with what you're saying if somebody is setting things up now and they're taking all the steps to get where they're at and not, not having to worry when situations come up like that and or like way back the depression or if we're going to go through another one or a recession, you're mm -hmm. kind of proofing yourself from disaster in a way. You you really are. And, and you don't even have to go back uh, as far as the depression, although you know, in, in, when I educate new people that come in to our practice, we talk about that. But uh, Rebecca, you can go back uh, as recent as the turn of the century, 2000. From 2000 to 2013, there were two major hiccups in our economic system. The first hiccup occurred between 2000 and 2003. The, the U.S. stock market dropped by 50%. Uh, the World Trade Center was leveled. In 2001, we had two major energy companies, Enron, WorldCom, they collapsed. Um, mm -hmm. That's you know, right. That 50% drop. Recovery occurred seven years later in 2007, and everybody went, whoosh, made it through that period. But then what happened in 2008, we had the subprime mortgage meltdown, banks failed, we had the market collapse in that two year period from 2007 to 2009 by almost 60%. People were whipsawed. And if you go to a Walmart or a, uh, a Kroger store or uh, a Lowe's store and you see some elderly person uh, carrying, pushing the carts into the store, they might be one of the people that were caught in that meltdown where they had anticipated their portfolio of stocks or mutual funds to continue to just do great as they had from 1982 to 2000, which was the best period in stock market history. You had that 13 year period from 2000 to 2013, where two major drops, two major recoveries wiped a lot of people out. So when COVID hit us, it was kind of like, oh my goodness, we're going through 2008 all over again. and. I think that's what's bringing people back to this whole idea of purpose-based investing. Having a purpose, understanding the purpose of my money, yes, I want to be able to leave my family something when I'm not here. But first and foremost, the purpose of my money is to be able to sustain my lifestyle once I'm, not, I'm finished working. So it's understanding that to put all this together, Rebecca, we have to find out what your budget is what you're going to expect from social security and what you can expect reasonably 
from your investments? What can be utilized from the principal of your investments without selling principal? I always talk about principal, your investment, each dollar in your investment uh, portfolio as being a chicken. That chicken, we don't want to kill that chicken too soon in retirement because that chicken can produce income or eggs. If we have plenty of eggs because we don't kill our chickens, we'll have enough eggs to eat for the rest of our life. The problem is a lot of people invest in such a manner where their principal, their chickens, are going to get clobbered. They're going to get killed because they're going to be selling them too early in their retirement when we go through a COVID situation and you're living off of your principal. So that's what got this book going for me is living purpose-based off our wealth to be able to sustain ourselves, to sustain others, and to live as a worry of worry-free life in retirement as possible. It takes away one worry that we don't have to, uh, to uh, dwell on. Mm -hmm. So with that, going into one of your other chapters, because this is where a lot of people, when you're talking about well, the chicken, chicken here, um, nothing is ah. without cost. So right. I know that people are thinking, well, okay, so if this is going to happen, how do I prepare for this? And what is this going to cost me? What do I need to think about in terms of getting involved in something that can help me be prepared that way? I love that question. That uh, That is an awesome question. So the cost really is to make sure that you seek out the services of an income specialist. And in every area of the country, you know, and I can give referrals to other income advisors, the, the, the first thing you owe yourself is to check with your current advisor. So if you're working with someone, you can ask them a fundamental question, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Advisor, when you advise your, your clients in retirement, how do you, um, how do you generate income from the portfolio that you, you manage for them. If they say things like, well, I set up a withdrawal for them and they live off of their money, then ask the question, dig a little deeper, drill a little deeper uh, with your question and ask them, well, are you suggesting that they set up a withdrawal plan where they're withdrawing just the income from interest or dividends? Because every investment out there today can be selected to have an income component to it. I can buy a stock that only uh, earns growth and I'm not gonna be able to earn any income from it. Uh, stocks that are growth-based are the large tech stocks like Apple and in Microsoft and those sorts of things. But stocks that pay genuine dividends are what you should be looking for in your retirement. Now, if your advisor is not a specialist in, in selecting individual stocks that pay dividends or bonds, bonds pay interest. They also give you some guarantees uh, against market uh, calamities. So the cost is really doing the digging and finding the uh, financial advisor that is a true income specialist that can say to you, I'm not generating faux income, I'm generating real income. So for example, if you have uh, uh, $500,000 in your portfolio, safely realistically uh, invested in income securities, such as okay. stocks that pay dividends, corporate bonds, preferred stocks, those sorts of things, reasonably you could expect roughly 25 to 30,000 per year of income from that half a million dollars of money, five to 6% per year in income stream where you're not going to be reducing that 500, you're gonna keep that 500 where it is, and you're going to be able to get reliable cash flow from it for the rest of your life. And it needs to be monitored, of course. And that's the third thing that I would say is uh, that I want to stress is when you invest with purpose for income, you need to make sure you're working with someone that stays in tune with what's going on geopolitically in our world with electric vehicles being pushed, climate change, uh, all of that uh, geopolitical uh, verbiage going on and the war of words in our country right now. It's going to be important to work specifically 
with someone that is plugged into what's happening in the environment with the geopolitical world. So you're not invested in something that maybe a year ago was great, a year later, not so much. So it's understanding that investing for a purpose with income, it needs to be monitored. So those three things require a specialist uh, to, to handle uh, making sure your retirement stays intact. That makes a lot of sense. And um, I'm really impressed with the things that you have shared in here. I mean, you're really detailing everything in such a succinct manner, start to finish. And um, if anyone didn't know where to start, I mean, you're walking them through step by step. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you too, if... Um, if someone reads your book and they're wanting to connect with you and maybe learn a little bit more, or um, do you do in-person or remote um, interviews or how does that work? Great question. I do remote interviews. COVID kind of brought that to uh, reality for me. I think before COVID, uh, a lot of advisors, a lot of professionals in a lot of different fields maybe some were more into the, the uh, remote, but uh, uh, most of my workshops, webinars are all online. So we can connect. Okay. I have clients in Portland, Oregon. I've got clients in San Diego. I've got clients all over the United States. And I have a lot of people that are just good, uh, good contacts. They're not necessarily clients. They listened to one of my webinars and they wanted to get some information. They have someone they can work with or maybe can research locally because some people want the information and then want to take it local and work with somebody they can, you know, knock on their door, walk in their office. But I will do uh, counseling, uh, walk through their situation. And there's something that the book talks about, I believe, at the end about the retirement risk report where I can help someone remotely complete uh, the retirement risk report where we can actually go through and see if their situation is set up so that the red flags of retirement don't snag them. Things like not being diversified for uh, income, things mm -hmm. like not having enough tax diversification. You want to reduce as much federal income tax as possible. And then, of course, the third thing, which can, I think is the biggest issue other than having income in your portfolio, that most people don't even think about. And that's the issue of volatility. Most people do not understand the volatility they're currently ha having in their portfolio. So I am available for that. They can uh, reach me at rightfinancialgroup.com. Uh, and I'd be more than happy to set up a, a complimentary 30-minute session with them to take them through the aspects of this retirement risk report and complimentary send them the report uh, and go through it with them also. I do have a staff here uh, at Wright Financial Group that can also help walk them through uh, the retirement risk report. And in some cases, if they're interested in wanting to read the book, we can also provide them the, uh, the information on how to obtain a copy. So uh, I love what I do. I'm passionate about what I do because I've been doing it for so long that I did it in more of the accumulation phase where I was using more aggressive investments for people that were getting older and not giving them the reliability they needed. So I made a conscious shift in how I did business uh, after 2008. And that's why I've dedicated the rest of my years in this business to helping to educate the public about income, income, income. It's not that you have to put all your money under the mattress or bury it in a tin can in the backyard. You want to be able to get income. There's a way to get it. And I find that discipline not being shared enough. So I want to be a resource to spread the gospel of income wherever I can uh, lead it to anywhere, to anyone that'll listen. So um, I hope I that helps. I love that. I love that. And I noticed that you have some videos on your Facebook uh, cited, um, mm -hmm. Right Financial as well. Right. I do. Uh, we have a we have a lot of educational videos about income, uh, about volatility, about stock market history, 
a lot of people, if they knew what history uh, was there, most people agree that in some way or shape or form, history tends to repeat itself more often than not. I mean, I find that being uh, 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 most people agree with that. So if you know the lessons of stock market history, then you'll probably be less inclined to repeat them. So understanding that mm -hmm. retirement for most Americans is 25 to 30 years in length. It's like an entire lifetime in retirement. You can't afford to make major mistakes, especially early in retirement, or you're, you're going to be dependent upon other people. So it's important to take care of yourself. I, I see a lot of um, uh, single spouses, both male and female, where the person that passed, Rebecca, uh, didn't handle the finances. They, they have relied on their partner oh. and their partner died okay. of cancer or whatever. And now all of this responsibility is on them. And they're like, I don't know what I'm doing. And my advisor says, don't worry about the 20% drop in my pot of money. Just keep pulling money out of it. I'll be okay. But the balance keeps dropping. Dave, what do I do? And I go through and I can analyze what their risk is in their risk allies report as part of this retirement risk report that I'll do complimentary. And I find out that, well, for heaven's sakes, during the 2008 drop and during the COVID drop, these investments that you're in lost 35 to 40%. So when people understand that, the light bulb goes on and they're like, okay, well, maybe I'm working with a specialist in growth, not necessarily in income. So that's what I can help fulfill for, for a lot of people and would love to do it. I really like that. And I really embrace how much time and dedication that you have because of your love for people and helping others in putting this together in such a way that is so simplified. And oftentimes I know that, including myself, uh, people will go and they look to find ways to be financially secure and they'll be reading this information. And even with as much education as somebody can have, it can still be a little bit confusing. And you're thinking, okay, this is too overwhelming and I just don't have time to go over all of this. And so, like you said, you really have to have somebody who's an expert in the field that can guide you with the way that your life, what is your purpose and how you want this to go. And, um, and I, and I love all of that. I, I really, focus. I mean, I really honed in on that when I saw that in your book. So I just want you to know that I appreciate everything that you've done so far. I know that you've directly impacted me and I appreciate you for everything that you're going to do to help the audience and those that you continue to work with and have already. And thank you for your time for being here today and sharing all of that with us. And I am really excited to have you back so that we can talk about more. I love it, Rebecca. I'd love to come back. Thank you for having me. I so appreciate you. And I appreciate all of you for tuning in. Know that your lives are very, very busy. And we want to get as much information to you in this as possible. Of course, with all the streaming services that are available out there now, you can rewind and you probably will want to go back and watch this. Definitely share this with your friends, family, all of your loved ones. And again, we've got you.